Hello, my name's Colin. I work for SCT Limited. This video is an overview of the DVR 114 and 118. The DVR is a compact half width unit. It can be controlled using the supplied remote control, the front panel buttons, or by using an optional USB mouse. For this video, I will use a mouse. Both the DVR 114 and the DVR 118 share the same operating system. The DVR 114 has four camera inputs and the 118 has eight. To access the menu on the DVR, you can either press the menu button on the front panel, or you can right click with the mouse and then select main menu. How to search for your recordings using the DVR-114? Press the menu button and select search. The unit will then search for any recordings. You'll see in green standard normal scheduled recordings and in red you'll see alarm triggered recordings. Select the one you want, click on it and it plays back. How to back up to USB? First insert a USB memory stick into the USB slot on the front of the DVR. Press the menu button and then select HDD. First we'll format the USB di disk to erase any data on it and get it ready for backup. So we click on format USB disk and then click OK. Once the disk is done you can verify the disk is working OK by clicking on USB disk info and that will show you the size of the disk and the available space. Now click on search, select a date and then select record list. Here are your recordings and showing the camera, the time and the date, the size of the file and the type of recording, normal or alarm. Select any files you wish to back up and then click back up. Once the backup's completed, it'll say successful, and you can click OK and exit there. Insert the USB memory stick into a computer. Once the drive is recognised, you'll get a, a folder like this come up. Click on Record File, and then H.264 Player Install. Go through the process of installing the software, follow the instructions. Once it's done, you can then click Open File, Find your file and click open to play it. While you're playing your file, you can scrub back and forward on the bar. You can pause, play, fast forward, rewind, and you can even capture still images from the, uh, from the video file by clicking on the capture button. Network in the DVR. This DVR is network ready, which gives the user the ability to view CCTV cameras live anywhere in the world on any internet connected computer. Networking your DVR is a two part process. First you need to get the DVR onto your internal network, and secondly you need to allow the DVR to send pictures to the outside world, i.e. the internet. First let's get the DVR onto an internal network. So press menu, select advance, and then network. Change the mode to DHCP and click apply. The DVR will now want to restart itself to apply their settings, so do that. Now the unit's reset itself. Go to menu, advance and network again and you'll see the DVR now has an IP address which in this case is 10.1.1.29. So any computer on the internal network, anything in the same, plugged into the same router, will be able to go to Internet Explorer, type in HTTP, full colon, forward slash, forward slash, 10.1.1.29, and be able to view the cameras as if they're set by the DVR. When the initial page is loaded, a drop-down bar appears at the top of the screen, asking you to download and install a file. This file is sent from the DVR itself, and is essential to allow viewing of the camera images. 
select run add-on. Next you'll see a login page. Here you can enter your password if you set one up in the password setting. If not, just click login. The DVR's web page will now load up and the camera images can be viewed, either all at once or individually. Now that the DVR is working correctly on the internal network, it's time to talk about the second part of the process, and that's letting the DVR send its pictures to the outside world so you can log in and view them from any internet connected Windows computer or most mobile phones. For this part of the process you're going to need the instruction manuals for your broadband router as you need to make some setting changes in the router's settings page. Now unfortunately because there's so many models of routers out there we can't assist with the specifics of how to make the setting changes to your actual router but here's what you need to do. You need to allow port forwarding and though, when you do that it'll ask you what ports you want to allow to uh, forward and that will be port 80 and port 9000 as you can see on the screen here. Port 80 is the web interface and port 9000 is for the video stream. Once this is done the DVR can send its images to anyone that logs in. This would be a good time to set up your passwords. Please see the DVR manual for how to do that. Now to find out your own IP address, your own external IP address, go to www.getip.com and this will tell you the IP address of your where your router is and that's the address you use when you log in from outside your network to view your cameras.